Hi, I'm David with General Air. When we MIG weld steel, there's several different shielding gases that we can use. All the way from 100% CO2 to 90% argon, 10% CO2, and really anywhere in between. Today, we're going to look at four popular gases for MIG welding steel. Let's take a look. First thing I like to talk about is what are the gases actually doing? Well, argon is a shielding gas and carbon dioxide is also a shielding gas, but they do different things. Carbon dioxide actually breaks apart when it's close to the arc and turns into carbon and oxygen. Some of that carbon's picked up by the weld and then the oxygen changes our metal from liquid iron to liquid iron oxide. Liquid iron oxide has a little bit less surface tension and it allows that puddle to wet out. I want to show you what a weld looks like without this carbon dioxide component. So the first weld we're going to make is with 100% argon. Now this is not something you'd want to do on your project, especially when you're welding steel. It is appropriate if we're MIG welding aluminum, but let's take a look at what happens when we MIG weld steel. was an interesting weld. Now you can really see how convex this weld is. This is with 250 inches per minute, 18 and a half volts with 035 wire. So it really shouldn't look like this, but the problem was it was missing that carbon dioxide component. So the carbon dioxide didn't break apart, it didn't add some oxygen in there, and we didn't make liquid iron oxide on the surface. So now let's go the opposite way. Let's add 100% CO2, so no argon whatsoever. We're gonna leave the settings alone, we'll weld with that and see what it looks like. Okay, now this is a weld with 100% CO2. So we don't have the benefit of argon. So what is the argon doing? Well, the argon is, makes it easier for our electrons to fly from our puddle through our arc and jump onto our contact tip. Since we're running in DC electrode positive, our electrons move from negative to positive, our work is in the negative, and our electrode, the wire, is in the positive. So those electrons jump off of the puddle through the arc and then onto the wire. So the argon really helps with that because it's got a lot of electrons in its atom. Well, here we're using 100% CO2, so it's much harder for the electrons to move around. So what we see is a much, much shorter arc and the puddle is pretty unstable. And that's because we've got a lot of oxygen because there's a lot of that carbon dioxide molecule breaking up and turning into oxygen. So the puddle is pretty liquidy. Now, I didn't touch my settings at all, right? I'm still at that 250 inches per minute at 18.5 volts. I'm gonna leave it there the entire time so we can really just see what happens in the gas. Now, comparatively to 100% argon, this is a heck of a lot better, but some people complain with 100% CO2 that there's more spatter involved with it and the puddle's not as stable, the arc is not as stable. And I definitely agree with that. Let's take a look at our next gas that we're gonna play with, and that's a mixture of the two. 75% argon, 25% carbon dioxide. All right, this is cool. This is our 100% CO2 weld, and this is our 75-25 argon CO2 weld. You can see that the mixed gas, the weld is actually a little bit wider. The reason that is, is the voltage is actually a little bit higher across the arc. And, and we already talked about that because the argon, it's easier for those electrons to fly through. So our arc was a little bit bigger with the 7525 than it was with the 100% CO2. So the weld got a little bit wider. Definitely a lot more smooth, a lot more consistent arc and the puddle was really smooth. Not much spatter to really speak about between the two. Basically, there's not much spatter in, in either of them, uh, but I definitely preferred the welding characteristics of the 7525. Right, so the next gas we're gonna look at is 8515. Now for short circuiting, 
8515 is really similar to 7525. What am I talking about with this short circuiting thing? Well, it's the mode of metal transfer. The wire has to make it through the arc and go into the puddle. That's the mode of transfer that happens here is either short circuit or axial spray or pulse spray. Well, there's another one called globular, but we don't really use it all that much. Kind of saw that globular transfer when we were welding with 100% argon. But anyways, with the short circuit transfer, what happens is the wire will touch the plate and then dead short. The arc actually turns off for a second. Then the amps rise in the wire and then it pops and that transfers some of the metal from the wire into the puddle. Well, 8515 can do this. It can do it really well, but it can also do what's called pulse. Pulse is a spray type transfer where the computer inside of the machine is pulsing little droplets of metal across the arc, which doesn't turn off. So you get a lot more penetration with pulse spray and almost no spatter. Let's weld with the 8515 in short circuit and in pulse, and we'll show you the difference. All right, the 8515 with short circuit, which is this guy right here, uh, it actually spattered quite a bit more than the 7525. We still had that nice smooth arc, but it just wasn't as good as the 7525. Definitely that 7525 is my favorite gas for short circuiting. However, check out the weld on the end here. This is our pulse weld. Now, you gotta have a machine that's capable of doing pulse, but 8515, that's the first gas kind of the first gas in the line that starts to pulse. We need at least an 8515 to make this happen. But the big characteristics about pulse is the arc doesn't turn off. It's just going high amp, low amp, high amp, low amp, low amp. And it makes a really incredibly nice smooth weld. It's higher penetrating than short circuit and there is no spatter on there. You can take a look at how sweet that bead profile is. Now the next we're gonna look at is gonna be a pulsing arc as well and that's our 90-10, 90 90% 90 argon, 10% CO2. Now this gas doesn't short circuit at all, or not really at all, but it doesn't short circuit very well. There's just not enough carbon dioxide in there to support uh, short circuiting. So 90-10 is the best gas we can choose for pulsing or axial spray. Let's check it out. So that was our last weld there, the 9010. And I didn't change my wire feed speed throughout this whole thing. I've always kept that at 250 inches per minute. We're still using that 035 wire. Now the pulsing parameters, they do change uh, the uh, overall heat input for sure because we're using a lot higher amperage when we're pulsing. The 9010 though is definitely the smoothest arc. You can see that the puddle got a little bit wider and that again, when we add more argon, we get a little bit more voltage in the arc. So the arc actually gets a little bit taller because that's what voltage does in the arc. It controls our arc length or how tall the arc is and how wide it is there at the base. So you can see there's multiple different gases that you can use when you MIG weld. If you're short circuiting or you're using pulse spray, the gas really makes a difference. Hey, thanks for watching this episode. If you've got any questions, leave them in the comment section below and check us out on our socials linked in the description.